Are you ready to make the perfect peach pie? Fully cooked, beautiful flavor. It takes a little bit of effort, but it's not that hard. Let's make it. So when you go to make a peach pie, you wanna have delicious ripe peaches. That's what's gonna be sweet and be the most flavor and in season. So what we need to start with doing is peeling the peaches. I know you're thinking, well, you could use canned peaches. No, 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 it's peach season. You use fresh, delicious peaches, that's the point. Now, to make them easier to peel, sometimes if they sit and they're ripe enough, they're easy to peel without doing anything. If not, it's like a tomato. Make a little X in the bottom, and this is just so you have an easy spot then to get your knife underneath the skin, and then put them into some, this was boiling water. I took it off, and now it's just sitting here so I can do the work. So you put them in for about 30 seconds, and then look, look at that. See how that just starts peeling right back? So it's not, it's actually not that hot. So I can just come in here and you see what I'm doing? I'm just taking my knife sideways and just pulling the skin off. That to me is just the easiest way if they're not peeling perfectly on themselves. And then it gives you these beautiful whole peaches. Like you can't go wrong with this. That's the best part here. And we are going to make a peach pie. This is to me, other than the crust, which we'll talk about that. But this is to me the most consuming time-wise. So then once I have them peeled, I just take my knife, run them around, and you can even slice them right off that pit. Now there are some peaches that are cling and some are called freestone. Usually most of the ones we buy in a grocery store are freestone, meaning they don't clean cling too much to that center pit. If it comes out freely like that, you're pretty good. So what I'm doing is just opening it up, taking out the pit, which on a ripe peach, it should come out like this pretty easily. Then, sometimes on the inside there, if they had a little butt side, they have a little bit of peel. I take my knife and I'm just slicing it in pieces. You can do this on a cutting board. You know what, when you grow up, like I did, in the kitchen always preserving things like fruit, you end up starting to cut things in a way that people never tell you to, but this is how you do it. This is how I cut off corn off the cob too when we're going to freeze it as a family. But anyway, I'm gonna cut these nice big slices and this is what now we're going to then make our filling out of. So you can see I have a few more peaches to do, but it's not gonna be that long. It's gonna be pretty quick and then we'll put together the filling. I just finished slicing and peeling all these peaches, which look delicious. Now peaches do brown, they do oxidize. So if you're gonna do it way ahead, we used to always keep them in a, like a bowl of water with a little bit of salt or like lemon juice. I'm gonna do the filling right away here and get it ready so it will be fine. So for the filling, we have a few ingredients because you wanna keep it simple. You wanna keep the flavor of the season. That's the point we're using in season ripe peaches. You want that flavor. So to start, we're gonna do some sugar. Now I'm not gonna do uh, like copious amounts of sugar, but enough to make it a pie, obviously. Now the thickener, you could use flour, you could use cornstarch. I'm using minute tapioca. Now the reason I like minute tapioca is it gives you a nice, clear filling, but it holds up well, but still is nice and viscous somewhat. So I'm putting that in, this is how we always made it growing up. I love minute tapioca, but use flour or cornstarch too, they work. A Little bit of salt, you know you need some salt just to kind of balance it all out. Now, for the flavorings, a little bit, a little bit of cinnamon, enough to kind of just give you that hint and let you know it's there, but not overpower again. And then a very small amount of some nutmeg. I always freshly grate mine. The nutmeg does something. It brings out that peach flavor. It works with the cinnamon and it just does something special. You don't want too much. You want just enough. This isn't Thanksgiving, but it does really make a difference. And now some acidity. You could do lemon. I like orange juice. There's something to me about the orange with the peach that just really, I don't know, they complement each other and they bring it out. So I'm gonna put all this in and then we'll mix it together. You wanna make sure everything's well mixed because you want that minute tapioca to really come in contact with all the juices that are collecting, which when you cut a fresh fruit like peaches, like really anything, look at the bottom. You're starting to get some juices. Do you see those coming? Oh, there they are. And when they hit the minute tapioca, it will slowly soften it. And in the oven, it just completely activates it all. And it absorbs that extra liquid and really just comes together and that's what you want. So I have it all mixed. We're gonna set it aside for a second. So I already made my pie crust and rolled them out. I have a top one and a bottom one. Cause to me, a peach pie traditionally, it needs two crusts. So in the magic here, I have two chilled crusts, which is kind of nice. And you can see here, they're pretty much the same. You see the nice pieces of butter, but let me show you how quick and easy it can be. In a large bowl, combine flour, a little bit of sugar and some salt. Mix that together. Now let's add in our cubed and cold butter. Fluff the butter with the dry mixture to get it all coated. Now pick up the pieces of butter and rub them between your thumb and forefinger and push them with the flour. 
Keep doing this until you have a really coarse mixture. You can see it gets kind of just like these big pieces of butter, smaller pieces, and slightly holds together when I make a fist, but then it just flakes off. Now add enough water to moisten it and so it just holds together. When it just begins to hold together into a dough ball, you know it's perfect and you can put it in plastic wrap. Push it together just to form a disc and we're gonna put it in the fridge for a little bit. Once it's slightly chilled, we're just gonna roll it out for the pie shell and the top crust. I roll it out about two inches larger than the pie dish. If you keep it moving in circles, you get a more round shape in the end. And in not too long, you have the pie crust you need. Once you have them rolled out, it's the easy part. Now, yes, you can use purchased pie dough. Okay, I'm not gonna tell you you can't. But there is something fun to me once in a while about making your own. And I think once you do it a few times, you can see it can be pretty easy. So what I'm doing is just letting it kind of fall into the edges. I'm not, I'm not trying to stretch the dough or push it in because that's when you start getting a dough that wants to retract in the oven and really kind of change its shape and size. So instead you want it to just slightly fall in and this was a chilled dough even after I rolled it out since I made it before. So you can see it's at the moment kind of firm because the butter firms back up. So don't let that scare you. Just slowly work it in and it softens pretty quickly. So that's why I like to always have it cold. I a lot of times will make pie crusts ahead of time and just even keep them in the freezer. You can roll them out if you want them like this. You can freeze them in sheets so it's flat. It's just kind of nice. And if you have the pie shell, if you have the pie dough made, the rest is easy, it's just filling. So now that that's in there, how perfect is that? We're gonna put our filling right into this one because what I wanna do for the top crust is do a lattice. And honestly, a lattice isn't that hard. It just, you know, is a little bit of cutting. And if you make a thick lattice, it's even easier. So I'm making sure to get all of the juices in there because one, that's gonna help thicken and that's a lot of flavor. So we're getting them all in there. And then you can just kind of pat it out to a somewhat even layer. Look how pretty that looks already. Already this is now getting more pliable that I can kind of just push it out, which is what you want. And I don't, I kind of tried to roll it so I didn't have to cut me off, which is just about perfect here. So I'm gonna set this aside. And for the lattice, you could just do a full top crust. Lay this on top, full top. I don't like that. I like a lattice because I like, <laughs> I like to see the peaches. So I have a little pastry cutter. It's a little fluted one. Sometimes those get lost when it bakes and they go away, but I still think it's fun. So I'm just gonna cut this and I'm gonna cut a little bit of that rough edge off just because this is kind of excess and then cut it. See how I'm cutting it slightly bigger? When you cut them bigger, they're easier to actually put on the pie. So I know it sounds weird, but you don't have to have all these tight little ones then. You can just have bigger ones and you just, it's easier. Now, don't worry if you're not getting perfectly straight lines. You can get a ruler out if you want to, or you can be like me and you can just eyeball it. This is an antique cutter, so it actually moves as you do it, which makes it even harder. But isn't that the fun of it? When you're making a pie, I think, this is my thing, same with cakes, anything you make at home, you want them to be homemade. You want them to look homemade. So if they're not perfect, guess what? That's okay, they're homemade. So don't be scared. I think when we're intimidated to make something at home, how sad, we should just try to make it and don't be scared. So I'm gonna cut my edges right here and do a little bit on the edge if I need that, we'll see. And now we just assemble. I mean, it's, you know what, it's not bad. So we're gonna take our pie and we're gonna start laying these off. So I take a big long one and I lay it across, kind of off center. You can see it's slightly not centered, but just about. And then we're gonna keep going and we're gonna go one the other way. So probably the next longest one and go that one slightly off center. And then you can kind of just keep laying and laying. We now lay one, boom, boom. See when they're bigger, it goes quickly. And that's the nice part. We can lift this one back now and put one right here. See, it's, you don't have to be scared of it. I don't know, I think, I remember the first time I did a lattice, I was completely scared out of my mind. And then I did it and I was like, okay, this is doable, we can do this, we can do hard things, and it's not even hard. So we're gonna keep peeling back, and do you see how I'm almost already done because we went to such great lengths to make sure they were big. So we'll put that one right on there. You know, I don't know, I think it's not that bad. And there's just something about a lattice. It's summer, <laughs> it's a pie, it's a lattice. It just makes sense, doesn't it? Now. You can also get press lattice, like you can get a form that kind of just presses it. Honestly, at this point, I'm not gonna put, I think that's just about right. So what I am gonna do is trim any of these excess just so they match the pie crust. It's just easier to me and I'm just gonna tear them. Some of them are just a little long. So if you just kind of tear them off, you get a scissors or a knife too, but 
we have fingers for a reason. We're just gonna tear it off. And now, just like you would any crust, you roll it under. So we're gonna roll this under. Kind of be careful just to make it a little bit. This is what is gonna end up being our nice crust. So I'm gonna ground the whole pie, roll these under, and then we'll crimp. Once you have them all rolled under, and if it's not perfect, guess what? I've been saying this whole time, it's okay, and it is. You just wanna make sure they're somewhat even. Now, honestly, you could leave it like that. I usually do a slight crimp, so I'll come over here and just kind of, do you have to? No. Does it make it look more like a pie? I think so. And if it's getting a little sticky, because it's getting warm, you can pop it in the fridge for a little bit, or freezer, just to get a little chill on it. Put some flour on your fingers to make sure it doesn't stick too much. It's whatever works for you. Once we get all this done, we are gonna give it a quick kind of egg wash on top. Just for one, it makes it shiny, makes it look a little bit more, you know, beautiful, which is the point. But then also it will help some raw sugar stick on top, which anytime I bake something like this, I like a little bit of raw sugar because I think it just looks better. I'm gonna take my egg wash and we're just gonna brush it on top. You just wanna make sure you brush it on all the sides. I'm kind of, you know, not too thick that it's just getting gloppy or making it too wet, but enough that you're gonna get a nice shine everywhere that's even. And then enough that you're gonna get that all that sugar, which I'll show you now, to actually stick on. I'm seeing a couple spots there I missed. Now again, when this bakes, yeah, it probably will seep out and go over. That's just how it happens. But now I'm taking this raw sugar. It's just turbinado sugar, sugar in the raw. It's a thick, crystally sugar. So when it bakes, it kind of maintains that sugary, crystalliness and gives it that great crunchy crisp topping, which to me is like, can you go wrong with? No, you can't. So this is great on scones, biscuits, sweet biscuits, things like that. So now that it's all on there, that's all we have to do. So we're gonna put it on, you can put it on either a parchment lined baking sheet just to catch those drips and all that extra that comes off like this. Or I like a pie, I like a pie little pan. It has a little hole in the center. I think it's supposed to help it bake more even. I don't know if that really does, but it just catches it nicely. So we're gonna put this in the oven and make sure it's bubbling throughout, even in the center, to know it's done. So it's been a while because this takes a long time to cool down. I started it at 425 and then 20 minutes in I turned it down to 375 and then you can see in the recipe that it can take a range of time but you want it to be bubbling throughout including the center. That is important to make sure all the thickener is activated. But then before you cut it you have to let it cool down. If you cut a hot pie it goes everywhere. You don't want that. You went to this work. I don't know. I think pies everyone always says they're a lost art. They're not lost. We found it right here. It just takes a little bit of time so maybe it's a weekend effort. Whatever it is it's worth it. So now we're gonna cut it. And you know, there's some tricks, but not always. But the thing is, when you want to have a piece of pie, you always think, oh, it needs to be perfect when you take it out. If it isn't, it's okay. If it goes flat, maybe mine will just go everywhere. We'll see. And then that just sometimes happens. So don't fret and don't think it needs to be like a magazine or a picture perfect look. That's not what pie is always all about. So we're gonna make a nice cut there. I like to actually cut two pieces only because I think it helps. I always think. This is just me. I think it helps get that first piece out a little easier because it gives it just a little bit of wiggle room. And then also taking your knife and just making sure you're cut through to the bottom, which it feels like it's a well done crust. See how it's nice and browned on the top? That is flavor, friends. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this in there Sometimes on a big top crust like this, it can be a little bit, oh. Okay, you guys, let me tell you something. This is why you make pie, and this is why it's worth it. Look at that. Stays together beautifully. Let's tip this up. Oh, that is a well done crust. Do you see that color? That color is brown because you want the butter to actually cook in the oven. That gives it a lot of flavor. So now, now yes, you should have this with some ice cream mode, but uh, I'm just gonna taste it by itself because guess what? Good pie is good pie no matter what. It's good. It feels like summer and it actually tastes like my childhood because we'd peach pie a lot growing up. What I love about this, and you can tell, the inside is still soft and viscous but just holds together. That's what you want. You want that good ratio of thickener that is cohesive but then is also soft enough that it doesn't just feel like it's gluey. 
the crust is very well baked. I mean, it's not a soggy bottom. It's actually browned on top and bottom on the sides. The peaches ring through. It's not cinnamon that you're first tasting. It's not nutmeg, you're tasting peach. I personally think that's amplified by the little bit of orange we put in it. I'm gonna stick to that. I think it's worth it. All together, it's a great pie. It's, it's the essence of summer. It's delicious, it's fresh. And I really hope you make it. So that's what I hope you do with this video. I hope you share it around. I hope everyone else can see that, guess what? If this guy can make a peach pie, anybody can do it. And if it doesn't look like this on your first try, don't fret, it's pie, it's still delicious. Crumble it, put it on ice cream and say it's the best peach topping you've ever had. That will make it work. Until next time, check my website, wiseguide.com for this whole recipe, also in the video description. And all of my other recipes, they're all on there. So make some pie, pass it around, have some friends. That's the point.